Brian. So, if you wanted to talk about, hear me talk about um, Moose and you're in the right place. If you wanted to hear any other talks, then you should be quite in the talk or any other direction. Uh, this is me. If you want to get in touch and um, tell me that I've got anything wrong, um, but by all means, shout out and in the talk. The talk is based around Per Lanet, um, which uh, Matt Trout was kind enough to mention in quite glowing terms in the um, keynote this, this morning. The stupid name comes from Pearl plus Planet. Uh, so it's kind of a, a, a re-implementation of the Python um, Planet soft, soft, software, uh, which I wrote because I didn't want to hack on Python. But what it does is uh, basically web feed aggregation. The input is lots of web feeds, whether they're Atom or uh, RSS or in any of its various flavors. And the, app and the output is a web page um, plus another web feed that aggregates all of the feeds. Simple stuff. Uh, I use it to build a number of um, Planet websites. And Ballon, my local hood. And Westminster, um, monitoring uh, all the blogs of the, the UK parliamentary MPs. Uh, and Doctor Who, because it's Doctor Who. <coughs> the basically, I wrote the software for me. Uh, I was scratching my own itch, as is so often the way with um, <coughs> source software. Didn't really um, think that anybody else would be that interested. But I stuck it on CPAM because I do. That's what, what you do with the stuff that you write. Unless it's a templating engine. Don't do that. We've got <laughs> oh, XML parsers. Yes, unless that's a very good reason. Um, I stuck it on, on GitHub because that's what you do. I made a few bug fixes, I reported a few bugs upstream to XML RSS and XML Atom and XML feed. I uh, made a few enhancements over, it's been going probably about 18 months or so now. Then along came the Pearl Iron Man. Is there anyone that doesn't know the Pearl Iron Man? So the Pearl Iron Man is a, a, a project that Matt Trout and the um, and Nice and Pearl people set, set up um, last summer, summer before last, uh, 18 months, months ago. Basically, the idea is to get people to blog about Pearl, because the more people talk about Pearl, the more people hear about Pearl, um, and it's kind of a marketing push. And if you blog regularly enough, you can get these little images to put on your site, and it's, uh, it starts off as a paper man, and then it becomes a rock man, and then and it's amazing how much you can encourage people to write just by giving them stupid little pictures. <laughs> it's an impressive piece of marketing, and some, someone, someone should write a, a case study on it. Anyway, so they have a, an aggregated site where they, 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 they publish all of the um, Ironman rules. And they were using a piece of software called Plagger. Now, Plagger is the Perl aggregator, um, and it's a great piece of software. It's written by um, Miyagawa, who is the, uh, behind um, PSGI and Plaque and CPAM Minus, and, and about half of the modern Perl stack as well, right? as, as I can work out. Um, but it's huge. It does all sorts of things. It, it, um, it doesn't just aggregate web feeds. It, um, um, it allows you to scrape information from websites to find out when things have, have have changed. It looks for notification changes from obscure Japanese forum sites that nobody in the West has ever heard of. And it doesn't just publish um, a, a website and a new web feed. Um, it allows you to pop up notification windows on whatever your operating system of choice is, saying that something's changed. You can publish the notifications in, 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 in many different ways. It, there's a thing in there. I'm sure it's just there for demonstration. Per, per, 
demonstration purposes, but it will pop out the CD um, thing on, on, on your computer when it gets a notification. It does, it does far too much for, for what I needed, or, or indeed for, for what the Iron Man people needed. So they wanted to switch to Polanyi. Uh, but Polanyi doesn't scale well, or at least it didn't. It has a YAML configuration file. Uh, see, that's fine. I'm, most of my sites, I'm aggregating a couple of dozen feeds. Last time I asked Matt, I think they just passed 300 um, blocks for Iron Man, and putting that in a YAML config file just doesn't scale particularly well. So about a year ago, 15 months ago, they, they, um, the people behind um, Pearl Iron Man are the, and the Enlightened Pearl organization, who are pretty much the same set of people as run Shadowcat, who are pretty much the same set of people behind Northwest England PM. So they had a hack day, um, and they decided to apply a bit of moose magic to Pearl Iron Basically, sashed and burned and, 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 and ripped the whole thing apart, started again. Which was great. I have no objection to people improving my, my, my software in any way, you know, even if it means uh, basically throwing it away and starting again from, from scratch. One of the, the good things that they did was they made it more easily subclassable. I'm not sure that subclassable is a word, but it, it's not, it should be. Uh, and one of the things that they did was they um, took a load of monolithic code and made it easy, more easy, to override um, the, the um, functionality. So, for example, one of the things that you have to do when you're taking um, web feeds from pretty much anywhere is you need to clean the HTML because people still can't write HTML. So there's this module on CPAN called HTML Scrubber. And it applies a set of scrubbing rules to a random piece of SQL and gives you back some cleaner. Uh, so the old code looked a bit like this. So we've got so um, we have this subroutine called run, which basically does all of the all of the work. And deep within this subroutine, there was this uh, <coughs> definition of a hash with the scrub rules, and there's very very stuff goes in there. Um, and I'm not entirely sure why, but Scrubber has two types of rules that you can define. You create the object, um, set the rules, um, and set the um, defaults. Oh, because this is like a few lines of code deep within one sub-routine, um, overriding it is hard because you have to over override the entire run subroutine, which does dozens of other things as well. <coughs> um, a bit of moose. It now, it now has an attribute called scrubber. It's rewrite, and it's, importantly, it's lazy build, which means it doesn't get built until you ask to use it. And then you have this build scrubber, and all the previous code um, that I showed you on, on the last slide just basically goes in, in this spot, and it returns the um, scrubber. Object. So now, basically, um, you can uh, subclass this, and all you need to do is, is change the <coughs> definitions in the build scrubber. And when the, the, the main code asks for a scrubber ob object, then you'll get a, a, a different type of, of scrubber object. You, you, you might want different rules, clean things in a slightly different way, for example. So overriding that becomes easier, and that's a big win. Um, repeat that half a dozen times for, for, for various other um, pieces of information that Perlanit uses, and um, everyone goes away much, much happier. Uh, so the other thing I mentioned was, of course, it, it's all in a YAML com configuration file, and that's <coughs> when you've got 300 feeds. So what they wanted was a database configuration file. And that um, gives better scaling, obviously. So what they did to do that was obviously they overwrote, they they um, wrote methods that that read the config in in much the same way as the the scrubber stuff worked. Basically, a, a build config method. 
Um, so there you go. Uh, they, they did a lot of this kind of stuff. Phase one of the refactoring was complete. Well, it was almost complete. Uh, it turned out that we needed much better tests because the stuff they gave me um, just didn't work in several ways. So um, I improved the test suite substantially <coughs> uh, and found out where the problems were and fixed them and learned an awful lot about Moose in the process, which was good. <coughs> I, actually, I've got a blog post about, about, uh, about this, but it sums up as um, if you want to learn about a new technology, then get somebody else to implement that technology on your software uh, brokenly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a fantastic learning curve. <laughs> but hey, um, they say release early, release often, so I pushed the stuff out, um, and eventually they came back and had another go, and they had a, a, a phase two. And this is where it starts getting a little bit more in interesting, because they implemented traits <coughs> on my code. So Moose has these concepts of traits and roles, and um, I'm sure we've all read um, Ovid writing blog posts about them, um, or maybe wrote, read the first paragraph of Ovid writing blog posts about them, and then think, yeah, that sounds in interesting. I'll get back to um, learning about those someday. The difference between traits and roles is subtle, and I will admit that I didn't really understand what the difference was. The implementation of them looks quite similar. Um, I didn't really understand the difference. So, what I do now, I'm going to share my, my knowledge. So a role um, is a bit like an interface for people that, that um, know Java. It defines methods that a class must implement. So here's uh, a role, we can take a role, it's called a role. Uh, obviously you use Moose role and that um, does all the clever role stuff. And it says that anything that uses this, this role must have a, a, a method called do stuff. So here's a, a, a class, as you can say, it's called a class. It uses Moose and this is the keyword with which brings in the role, saying this class implements <coughs> this role. And all this class has currently is a name attribute. Uh, so when we try to use this class in a piece of software, we create a new instance of the class, passing in the name. Uh, and when we try to run it, we get a compile time error say that the role requires a method do stuff to be implemented by a class. Uh, we get lots of other scary stuff because the moose error messages are not the most con concise error messages I've ever seen. <laughs> but at first, uh, I find with moose error, error messages, if there's pages and pages of scary stuff, I just read the first couple of lines and it normally tells me what I need to know. So we need to implement this method. So we get <coughs> sub do stuff that does some, something. Uh, and it then works fine. So roles um, impose an interface. They say you must have this method or these methods in your class. Uh, we don't use those in Polanit. I'm just telling you about them to contrast them with traits. Traits add functionality to the class. A bit like a mix-in for people that speak <coughs> Java. So re remember HTML Scrubber. Now we have this package, uh, it's called per, per Adit Trait Scrubber. Um, and it basically has all of the scrubber stuff from the previous code that we saw. Uh, you'll notice that we're using Moose Roll, uh, and, and yes, I know that needs explanation, and I will get back to it. It also has this thing, this is also in the um, scrubber trait. Uh, around the clean HTML method, do this. And this is the stuff that basically calls Scrubber and scrubs a piece of HTML. So <coughs> the standard perlanet.pm, we have this clean HTML method because that's one of the steps that perlanet goes, goes, goes through. But it does nothing at all until you add the right trait, basically an empty method. It acts as a hook for you to call other 
methods around in the trade. So actually, if you look at Perlanit now, it's a really, it's a it's a hollow shell of a of a module. All of the interesting stuff has been moved out into trait modules. <coughs> Perlanit really doesn't do very much until you mix in the right set of traits to do the things that, that we want. Um, so we've implemented a Perlanit simple. I say we, they, oh, which basically looks like this. Um, so it extends per, <coughs> extends the standard per Lanit and it adds all of these traits. And these are the traits that, 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 that bring per Lanit's behavior back up to what the previous monolithic version looked like. So it adds support for caching, for OPML ge ge generation, two types of, of, of cleaning the, the HTML scrubbing and tidying, uh, getting the config from YAML, producing the output from, um, by using template toolkit to produce the, um, the, the, the website output, and creating a feed file. Um, all of this is now implemented in place. So let's go back and have a look at that moose roll that was being used for both rolls and traits, uh, which seems a bit um, strange. Now this is Perl, remember. Things are not always as clear cut as you think they are. Uh, basically, roles and traits are the same thing, it turns out. Uh, and and, and the, the difference largely depends on where the code is. Uh, and it's a semantic thing. So roles are where the code is actually in your class, and the, and the, 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 the role says you have to implement this code. And traits are where the code is in the trait, and you can just bring that behavior into your code. Subtle difference, but uh, useful. So depending on whether it's a, um, it doesn't matter, they are all use the, um, the, the moose role as their base class. So Planet is now fully trait-based, and again, I learned a lot about <coughs> how, um, how traits and roles work by fixing other people's broken um, work on my code, which again I highly recommend. Uh, it becomes easy to add functionality just by adding new traits. Um, I'm hoping to see um, a planet <coughs> trait eco system come up. I mean, the, the um, IMM people have already got um, traits that do away with the YAML config and read the configuration out of a database. Things like that. I learned an awful lot about moose and roles and traits on this journey. And now, hopefully, so have you. More information um, Alanit. The planetarium is where I host most of my planets. Alanit.maxol.com will eventually be a website about Perlanit once I've got the time. Uh, and obviously, moose.pearl.org is where to go to find information about this. My timer says I have 30 seconds left. Um, I can take one question.